Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about TTRPGs. Mm. First up for TTRPG today, um, we have, once again, the Last Blessing mug. Uh, again, given to me by my party when we finished up our uh, four-year-long campaign uh, inside of it. Still dwindling ever. Uh, the Last Blessing uh, Gunpowder Green and Lemon Tea. Again, it smells fantastic. I like it a lot. Um, I went and I just rewarmed it up, so it's good and hot again for me. Uh, um, but uh, let's go ahead and let's dive straight on into what we are talking about today. It is Thursday, which means today it is for the Game Masters out there. Um, normally, we'd be doing Third Party Thursday. Go support Third Party Creators. They're amazing. Love them. Love everything they're doing. But today and every Thursday for this week, or this week, this season, we are talking about... Uh, how to run the game that we're talking about for that week. So, we're talking about Pathfinder right now. So let's go ahead and let's dive into what it takes to go ahead and run a Pathfinder game. Uh, first and foremost, what do you need to run the game? What a good question. Uh, what you need to run the game uh, is access to the uh, Pathfinder rule books. Again, free on the internet, wherever you need them. Um, or uh, in oh, print copy. Uh, again, they have the big size and the pocket size, which are significantly cheaper, um, but are also uh, paperback and printed much smaller. So that one is tricky for me. Uh, so I like the big ones that are hardcover. Um, but you can go ahead and you can get uh, the rules basically anywhere that you need to get them from. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to be talking quite a bit today. Well, not not a ton today, but we're going to be mentioning a few times the Archives of Nethys. This is a really, really great uh, platform for uh, you to access basically all the Pathfinder information that you could possibly need to access. Um, it's super, super helpful. Um, unfortunately, there is not a combined site for Pathbuilder and Archive Nethys uh, like there is for D&D with D&D Beyond, um, but uh, it, those two are two of the really, really fantastic resources that I have been using to learn how to play this dang game. Um, so let's go ahead and let's dive into how you actually run the game. Now, if you're coming from 5th edition, most of these concepts are actually going to be very familiar to you. This is not a section where there is a ton of deviation. Uh, the biggest one is going to be when we talk about DCs for checks and stuff like that in just a second. But let's go ahead and let's just start broad here. Uh, what you need to run the game. You need a set of dice, obviously, or many sets of dice, obviously. You need a plan uh, or some serious improv skills, and you need a table full of players. Good. We're done with the video now. We're, we'll move right on. No, not quite. Um, so, what you need to run Pathfinder uh, is you need access to rule to the rules. You need the materials that you need for pretty much any tabletop role-playing game, uh, and then you need to be able to uh, go ahead and work to implement them. Uh, you need a working knowledge of most of the rules. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to have them all memorized. Obviously, I don't have them all memorized in any capacity. So, whenever I run my first Pathfinder game, I'm going to be stumbling through the books like an absolute maniac the whole time. You get better as you go. That's just the way it goes. But uh, you just need a, a table full of people who are going to be patient with you as you go. Uh, so uh, we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to do DCs basically first here because uh, it is going to be the core of how this whole thing works. Um, because the reality is with a game like Pathfinder or 5th Edition or most other uh, things, it's just talking back and forth until something presents itself as a challenge to your players. Uh, now, as a dun game master for Pathfinder, not dungeon master, as a game master for Pathfinder, um, you are responsible for setting the environmental world around them DCs. Difficulty class, for those of you who don't know what that means. Um, this is, again, as I mentioned before, the biggest deviation from 5th edition, uh, if that is the system you are familiar with. Um, because DCs are wildly different in this one. Not necessarily in concept, but in actual number, they get really, really high. Um, so you have to remember, if you think back to two days ago, I want to say. Um, I don't remember when I talked about it. I think it was two days ago. Uh, when I talked about skills. The skills in a Pathfinder game are so different from skills in a 5th edition game. 5th edition has something uh, called bounded accuracy for uh, specifically attacks and that sort of thing. Pathfinder operates on a much larger scale of bounded accuracy uh, because your uh, bonus to rolls is going to be equal to your 
uh, ability score plus your class or character level plus your uh, training level, you're going to get really big numbers. A level 10 character who is trained to master in a skill with, that is based on dexterity that has an 18 dexterity is going to be getting a plus 20 to the roll. Uh, so that could be up to a 40 then. And if you're playing 5th edition and somebody says 40, you look at them like they just grew a third head uh, because, quite frankly, you don't get that high unless you're a rogue who's sneaking with Pass Without a Trace going. It's just the way that it goes. Um, so, <laughs> uh, you need to be able to adapt and adjust your DCs accordingly. Uh, there is a really phenomenal table in the core rules that talks about uh, different DCs by level of uh, either party or level of uh, trap, environmental hazard, whatever it is that you are trying to do. Um, and it starts down at 5 and it goes up to 40 um, because, again, 40 is going to be a very, very high DC but not unachievable for some people. If you are a 15th level character with a plus five in uh, dexterity and you are trained to master, you are going to be working with a plus 26 to whatever roll you hit, which means that to hit a 40, you have to hit a 14 or higher, which is still more difficult than not. Um, but that is kind of the working knowledge that you need to keep in your head. Now, because this scale is so much wider, you are going to have to sort of deal with it. But what you can do is take basically your base DC and add your character or your party's level to that DC. Uh, so if you were sitting down to play a fifth edition game and you went, okay, this is going to be a DC 10 check. It's a moderate check. It's not particularly difficult, but there is a chance for failing it. And somebody with a plus zero is sitting next to somebody with a plus 11. Then you go, okay, well, the plus 11 is guaranteed to succeed, but the plus zero might fail. Now, if they are a 10th level party and you're looking at a Pathfinder game, you go ahead and you just add 10 to that because it accomplishes the same thing for that person who has zero training, zero like real proficiency in it. Um, whereas the person who is well trained in it is going to be blasting past that number far and away. And that is just the way that it goes because you are you know that they're guaranteed to succeed on it anyway. So conceptually, it's the same. You just have to adjust the way that you are like looking at the numbers. Uh, and the way that you're thinking about the numbers. So I haven't gotten to implement that because, again, I haven't run a Pathfinder game yet. But I think that the way to do that is basically to take what you believe the DC between 1 and 30, if you are looking at it in 5e terms, because, again, I'm sort of I'm sort of like gauge, gearing this towards the 5e players who are trying to do something else. Um, and you just go ahead and you take your DC and you add your party level to it because that will give you more or less what you are looking for. Um, now, don't get me wrong, you don't want to go too, too crazy here, but if you are running high, high-level stuff, one, the game is already broken because you're running high-level stuff, and there is no tabletop game, uh, no matter how well-scaled it is, that can support uh, high-level play at an, at an extended rate with, you know, without it being catastrophic and world-ending, um, because Pathfinder, level 20 party, uh, were trained to legendary in a skill and have, let's call it a plus six in that skill, they are getting a plus 34 to whatever they roll. So they are hitting potentially up to a 54. Uh, <coughs> and that's just the way it is. Um, and that's the way that it is in 5e2. When you have that high, high level party, they are getting plus 17s automatically to stuff. It it, it just, it, it happens. It's fine. Um, not the point. So setting DCs. You are going to be uh, trying to re-rack your brain around actually setting a DC to the correct number. Um, that is just, that is the biggest adjustment, honestly, in my mind, that you have to make as somebody who is running a role play session of the game. Um, now, the other complication comes in when you start trying to introduce combat. Now, again, I read this book, uh, and I have dabbled around in, like, the best year and stuff like that, but I read this one. <laughs> I did not get to read the Game Mastery Guide yet, uh, because this book is, like, 670 pages. That's so many pages. And I jammed all this information into my brain over the course of about two weeks. Um, so, uh, stick with me. And again, feel free to correct me in comments, because that is what they are there for uh, on YouTube, on whatever. Uh, and if you're listening to this on podcast, find me on YouTube and correct me in the comments there, because why not? Um, so if you are running combat, first off, you have to get used to the three-action uh, system, the one that I talked about before. Uh, and I would honestly make yourself up a cheat sheet of all of the available actions 
uh, in it just that are listed out in the core rules in whatever. Because then you can do a quick reference down to what it is that your player is asking for. And if you're saying, oh, they are asking to make a demoralized check, that is a charisma based check. You do, uh, or I think it's intimidation ultimately as like the skill but like you have just that cheat sheet there in front of you so that you know you know what you're doing until you get those things down because quite frankly it, it's too much to ask you to get them all down immediately um and like i said pathfinder seemingly actively tries to encourage you to use skills as opposed to just going up and hitting stuff so things like de demoralize is a really really good uh example of just a check that you can make that helps to sort of like change the way that the battlefield is actually operating um so the things that you really need to run the game are uh the ability to change those dcs and access to a list of what the actions that your players might be trying to take are uh, if you make that uh, list up it might be good to hand it out to your players too so that they can see what their options are as they go through because let's be honest here it's going to be a learning experience for pretty much everybody uh, we're having an experienced player at the table who can be like uh this is a good idea this might help you a lot here um, but having the list lets your players sort of pick out what they actually want to do um now again i didn't get to read the game mastery part about combat um, but from everything that i see here combat more or less works the same way that it works in fifth edition you are rolling initiative uh, you are dealing with your action economy. Uh, you're dealing with your reactions, which is part of action economy, but I thought I'd throw it in there. Uh, you're dealing with uh, what you can do on your turn versus what you're doing on other people's turns. Um, and so if you have experience running games for 5th edition, it is not going to be so alien in how to run Pathfinder that you will be thrown way off. You might have to like stop and go, okay, but wait, what is a will save? Or wait, what is a fortitude save? Why is that here instead of wisdom or constitution? But quite frankly, at the end of the day, it, it's all transferable skills. It's not something that is going to be super, super intensely difficult for you to pick up and figure out. I honestly think that the players might have it more difficult in trying to like transition over because they are the ones that are trying to deal with uh, what their actual characters can do and what they have the ability to like pull from as characters you as the game master need to kind of know what those things are as well but it is on them to actually know what their character sheet can do um, and so being able to just like sit down and run a game the way that you run games and understand that like you are going to be asking for checks with different names than you would in fifth edition or checks with higher dcs because that is what the game is built around just getting that through your head is honestly half of the battle more than half the battle i said 85 percent earlier i think it's probably 85 percent of the battle and then just relearning those couple of little things are everything you really need from my perception to be able to run a game of pathfinder second edition um it seems like to me the gms might have an easier transition over than the players do but again i didn't read the game mastery guide yet haha -ha. um because i don't know I, I i didn't get my hands on it in time um i will say that this book here has a massive, massive, massive section on, uh, let's see if I can just flip right open to it. Um, here we go, game mastering, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I wanna say it's like 60 or 70 pages long, um, but across those 60 or 70 pages, and it might sound scary when I say it like that, th there's tables, there's tables of stuff you can do. Uh, there's uh, different types, like there's, ha I'm on hazards right now, there's natural disasters. There's, uh, let's see here, um, examples of traps. There's uh, treasures, terrain types, all kinds of things that they have built for you that you can go ahead and access directly from the core rulebook. And that is phenomenal in its own right, right? Like just having that available to you is, again, in my mind, way more than half the battle. Just being able to open it and go, give me a second, let me find that in this book. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, and so much of game mastering goes into prep anyway, that once you got your prep down where you're like slogging through this book, you're good. You're good to go. Um, maybe, maybe that's a weird sort of naive perspective for me because I love running games. And honestly, I do think it is easier than playing sometimes. Um, just because of the way that my brain works, I recognize that it's way more work than playing a lot of the time. Um, but not the point. Um, so 
that is everything you need to run Pathfinder. You just need access to the rules and uh, the ability to pause, take a look, figure things out as you go, uh, the ability to set DCs, and the ability to, uh, you know, run some amount of encounter for your party, whether that is traps and skill checks or combat straight up, whatever it is, that is what you need to know to be able to actually run the game. Uh, again, <laughs> I think there's a lot of transferable skill here. Um, so apologies if this uh, wasn't particularly helpful for you because I sat here and I said, well, these are the things you need to do. Uh, and then I didn't say a whole lot. Uh, this is another one of the episodes that might be a little bit easier uh, or a little bit more useful in other games that aren't as directly transferable from 5th edition. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So uh, thank you guys so much for uh, consuming, take, coming along with me on this lovely little journey here uh, through Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Again, correct me in the comments, please. That is what they are there for. I am learning this game along with you guys here. Please, please, please help me out make sure that I know what it is that I am supposed to be talking about here instead. Um, and if you guys want to support the channel, support this the, like whole concept here, uh, go ahead and subscribe either on the podcasting platforms or on YouTube, depending on which one you are listening on, because either way, it helps me out a whole lot. Uh, thank you guys once again so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, now, that is everything I have to talk to you guys about today. So with all that said, don't forget, drink tea, play TTRPGs, and keep on rolling.